It is time for America to take the next steps. Today, I announce a new plan to explore space and extend a human presence across our solar system. We'll make steady progress. One mission, one voyage, one landing at a time. NASA is going back to the future. It is preparing for people to venture back to the moon, on to Mars, and eventually to the worlds beyond. Before we can return to the moon, NASA needs to prospect for resources on the surface that can be used to support astronauts living on lunar bases. A fundamental resource is oxygen, which can be used for air and rocket propellant, so we don't have to carry everything with us. So how do we start locating these resources? Astronomers use the Hubble Space Telescope's sharp eye to look at a unique location on the moon that could provide materials for future astronauts. Part of Hubble's lunar prospecting was to look at two Apollo sites where astronauts found titanium oxides, a potential resource for oxygen. So Hubble Vision, with its ultraviolet eyes and its massive, if you will, uh, light gathering ca capabilities, offering resolution at the moon at the scale of half a soccer field, um, I mean, that's better than most of our planetary orbiters achieve in these kinds of methods. So Hubble combines high resolution vision imaging, as we call it, with this new ultraviolet, unexplored part of the spectrum to look for these unique materials. Hubble took images of the Apollo 15 and Apollo 17 landing sites in ultraviolet and visible light. When viewed, the Apollo 17 site was the most unique site for a comparison with the Aristarchus Plateau, which Hubble also viewed. Aristarchus has a tortured history, enduring a monumental-sized asteroid slamming into it around 100 million years ago, making a crater more than twice as deep as the Grand Canyon. A few billion years earlier, lava flows and volcanic ash deposits covered the area with glassy materials that are similar to some of the Apollo sites. Most of the moon is covered with, if you will, we call it the regolith. It is the pulverized rock debris and other stuff that's been lying there, you know, born by the cosmic collisions that made the cratered lunar landscape. In that soil, where we've sampled it with the human beings of the Apollo voyages, we see some interesting ingredients. Ingredients that are enriched in titanium dioxide, a substance which on Earth is relatively rare, captured in some types of rocks, and that happens to be a substance where it's relatively easy, energy-wise, to liberate the oxygen from the bond with the metal, the titanium, and use it. The Aristarchus site suggests that it is potentially rich in titanium oxides. NASA will next look at other lunar areas that may be good places to go for these resources. However, the moon has as much surface area as the continent of Africa. What we have looked at so far would be about the size of a huge ranch in Montana. Hubble has opened our eyes to the beginnings of prospecting the moon's rich and diverse landscape. The telescope's observations are blazing a trail for future expeditions, such as NASA's Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, planned for 2008. Space is the environment we have to learn to live with, be safe from, venture into to gain its valuable resources, some of which may be energy rich, some of which may tell us about our own origins. There's many different things. And ultimately, becoming space family will allow us, as needed, to learn how to escape this planet if we need to and move beyond. As NASA journeys farther into the final frontier, Hubble's vision is contributing to this bold, exciting, and ambitious vision of space exploration. With the experience and knowledge gained on the moon, we will then be ready to take the next steps of space exploration, human missions to Mars, and to worlds beyond.